What did we say, man? This is the exact thing that we were talking about. Once Ilya Mikheyev returned to the Vancouver Canucks lineup, it would put Connor Garland in a pretty weird spot. No longer is he a top six forward on this team. He is playing on the third line with guys like Pia Sutter and Anthony Bavillier. And that's not to slight him, no disrespect to these other players, it's just when you talk about Connor Garland, Vancouver Canucks forward, and you acknowledge how he has wanted out already, these are kind of the reasons why. You've got other players in the top six rounding out that team's forward core. Pedersen, Mikheyev, Kuzmenko, Besser, Phil DiGiuseppe, and JT Miller. Garland is just not good enough to crack that spot. And he's wanted out because of it. So, if we go over to David Penyota and the fourth period, let's look at that article that we actually looked at yesterday in the Anthony Mantha Yoel Armia trade video and talk about some of the other updates regarding Connor Garland that are located in this piece. Now, again, this article was published on the 25th. Can the stars make the cap work for Patrick Kane? Link is going to be in the description if you want to go ahead and read this out yourself. But there is indeed a new scoop as to how the Connor Garland trade talks are going. Before we dive into that, though, let's just go over the profile here. Garland has two points in six games for the Vancouver Canucks this season, and admittedly, he hasn't really looked super amazing. Like, he's fine. He's going out there. He's playing. He had an impact in the first game where he scored the goal, and then later on, he picked up an assist, but... Other than that, Connor Garland is sort of bearing the fruits of the organization's forward depth. He is not really being given the top spot on the team, and his numbers are struggling because of it. That's not his fault. It's not the Vancouver Canucks' fault. It's just, circumstantially, not the best ideal situation. So, he's wanted out for a while. Let's go over to the new update as provided by David Penyota. Take a look at this. There are teams willing to take bodies if they're incentivized to do so. The Montreal Canadiens, San Jose Sharks, Flyers, and Ducks are all willing and able to be third-party conduits, but it comes with a price. I believe all four teams have been in talks with the Vancouver Canucks about their Connor Garland situation, with all four acting as a facilitator that would see Garland end up elsewhere. So far, those discussions haven't led to a deal, and that re-emphasizes the associated costs needed to move out money. But could one of them be the home for Marshmint or Foxa? That will depend on how much Mill is willing to dish out. Now, why exactly does this relate over to the Marshamant or Foxa conversation? Well, it's because this article is, in its entirety, talking about the Dallas Stars and Patrick Kane and whether or not that's actually a possibility. But the update lies within these words, that the Vancouver Canucks are in a spot where they may not just trade Garland away for anything straight up, they might have to go out there and send him to another team to retain salary before Garland gets sent to his final destination, his actual playing spot. And teams like the Flyers, Ducks, Sharks, and Canadians have stepped in and apparently said, hey, we'd be willing to retain some salary on this guy if you can give us some extra stuff. Now, I'm just going to go out there on the record and say, if you get Connor Garland at, let's say, 75% salary retained, best case scenario, he's making 4.95 mil right now. Let's say Vancouver retains a certain amount maybe half or do you want to even say half is that even a possibility let's say he goes over to some other team and he gets retained at 50 percent and then gets sent over to another squad vancouver only has one guy in their buyout right now it's oliver ekman larson but if you're able to get connor garland for a price tag that's under let's say three million dollars that's honestly pretty solid and if you go best case scenario, let's say Vancouver retains 50% and then some other team retains 50% of the 50%, aka 25%, and you're able to get Garland at, what is that, 5 times 0.25, if you're able to get Garland at 1.2 something mil, that's honestly a really good deal. Especially since Garland is good enough, in my opinion at least, to play top 6 minutes and be a meaningful contributor in that role. Last year, he had 46 points in 81 games played, the year before that, 52 points in 77 games. He had almost 20 goals the first year he was in Vancouver, and he had 30-plus assists. This year, he is on pace for nowhere near that, but, I mean, look, the goals, I guess, is right there. Even last year, you could say that he wasn't really too amazing, but he did have the hat-trick at the end of the year, so that boosted his goal total up to 17. 
Connor Garland, though, I feel like has not really been too much of a fit with the current version of the Vancouver Canucks. Like, we always go back to when he was acquired initially in the OEL trade. During those first few games of Garland's Vancouver Canucks tenure, he was a beast. He was the best player on the ice. Sure, the Canucks had a really big slump last year, and two years ago, they didn't really start off too hot either. But in that time frame two years ago, Connor Garland was the best player on the team. We remember the really accurate snipes that he had in the far areas of the goal line. He was getting under his opponent's skin. He was really agitating everybody that he would play against, and he was making plays on top of that. Nowadays, playing in the third line, he hasn't really been doing the same thing. He hasn't been effective to the same capacity. He's been just kind of holding onto the puck a little bit too long, not making the right plays, skating into the corner with it, getting beat out, and like, it's not been a good transition for a guy who's definitely had a really good career up to this point. Fifth round guy, overager when he was drafted by Arizona, and he eventually worked his way up into that system to where he was a contributing NHL player. But now it looks like his next step is probably going to be elsewhere. He's 27 years old, signed onto the books till 2026, so there definitely is still time for Garland to become a good player in the top six of some other NHL team, but there may have to be some extra teams going out there stepping in to retain some more salary to make it worth it for whatever destination it is that he ends up on at the end of it. Like, there are some teams that I feel could actually use this guy. We'd already seen other reports that teams like Columbus or Washington were in talks to maybe getting this guy. Nashville comes to mind. And hey, you want to talk about Nashville? That team just played off against Vancouver the other night, so they probably have done their scouting and due diligence. It's just unfortunate that Connor Garland did not really have the best game against the Nashville Predators. I mean, the Canucks had a really specific game plan that ended up working, so the fact that I guess you could say he's a cog in a machine that works, I guess is good, but at the end of the day, Connor Garland is in a very difficult spot as a pro athlete on the Vancouver Canucks. Too good for the bottom six, not good enough for the top six. I guess you could say he's in the same territory as Anthony Bavillier, although based off of everything we've heard, it seems like Bavillier is all right with where he's at. Like, sure, there have already been rumors that Bavillier might get traded to. Him, Besser, Garland are always the ones that come to mind, but based off of what we have been feeling around in this environment, in this hockey town, it feels more like Bavillier is okay with just sticking around. But for Connor Garland, there were already extenuating reports saying that he'd won it out in the summer already, so this has been brewing for a while. Even though he did start out the season with the goal against the Oilers to get everything going, it still is apparent that he is involved in these trade discussions. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Montreal Canadiens, the Sharks, the Flyers, and the Anaheim Ducks. If you're a fan of any of these teams, what exactly is the price that you would want in order to retain salary on Connor Garland before sending him out to another team? A lot of these teams have already been facilitators of the three-team trade, of taking a player's salary, holding onto it a bit, and then sending him off to some other playoff contender team. We see these three-team trades a lot more now than we have over the past few years, so the fact that Montreal, Philly, San Jose, and Anaheim are willing to take advantage of that and saying to other GMs, yeah, you know, like, we're... Here, we can hold on to salary if you want. You just got to give us, let's say, a first round pick or a prospect or a second round pick or a third. What's the price there? If you're a Canadiens fan, what are your thoughts on the idea of Connor Garland and holding on to some salary till 2026? If you're a Sharks fan, what is it that you want from Vancouver to make that trade work? If you're a Flyers or an Anaheim Ducks fan, who is it that you would want to send Garland to and get something back for your team? What are your roles in this entire conversation? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Again, link is going to be in the description if you want to go ahead and read the entire article on the fourth period. I guess you could talk a little bit about the Dallas Stars and Kane too, because that's what the article is all centralized around. But I hope you enjoyed this Vrishar Shrolls 99. And bye. <laughs>